CFCF 600 in Montreal. AM60, your major league station, presents Montreal Expos Baseball. Brought to you in part by Labatt Breweries, Brewers of Labatt 50. By your local Pontiac, Buick, and GMC truck dealers, who invite you to come in and test drive their all-star lineup of cars and trucks. By the people at Valvoline, who make special oils for your special car, including Guard, Turbo 5, and all climates. And by Ultramar, serving you better with over 1,400 service stations across Canada. Montreal Expos Baseball on AM60. This afternoon at Olympic Stadium, it's Fan Appreciation Day and the final game of the 1987 season. The Expos take on the Chicago Cubs. Hi again, everybody. This is Dave Van Horn along with Jim Panning. Outside, a very cool and brisk day. Under the roof, it's cool, but a great afternoon for baseball as the Expos and the Cubs close out play for 1987. The Expos have won the first two games of this series, beating the Cubs 7-1 on Friday night, winning again yesterday afternoon 5-4, and this afternoon, the Expos will try to sweep the Chicago Cubs in this, the final series of the season. Pasquale Perez will be on the mound for the Expos with a 7-0 record. The right-hander was just named National League Pitcher of the Month for the month of September, and he was also named the Expos Player of the Month for September. Pitching for the Chicago Cubs will be left-hander Jamie Moyer. He is 11 and 15. The Expos right now with 91 wins are tied with the New York Mets for second place in the National League East. The Cardinals, of course, go on as East Division champions to play the Giants in the League Championship Series underway in St. Louis on Tuesday. For the Expos, high hopes to finish second. The New York Mets have to lose there this afternoon, and of course the Expos have to win here. Otherwise, there's either going to be a tie, but the Expos would prefer to finish ahead of the New York Mets. It could all happen today. We'll stay on top of those other games as well, in addition to the big game over in Detroit between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Detroit Tigers, who are trying to decide the American League East Division winner. Our guest on the pregame show, as you might have guessed, is Expos manager Buck Rogers, talking with Jim Panning. We'll be back with that in just a moment. Give me his quality years ago, Buck Rogers was my first pregame show guest. And Buck, it's nice to have you on my last pregame show. Well, Jim, it's nice to be uh, go from first to last, but I think also we went from last to first <laughs> also in this situation. Well, there's no doubt about that. Didn't wind up the spring training schedule all that well. Lost the first five, and then all of a sudden, 91 victories going into this last day. Well, this has been a uh, spectacular season for what we expected in spring training and uh, the things that have come about and the things that have come together. So uh, we felt in spring training that if everything, if we got Reigns back, if Mar Martinez Smith came back healthy, if everything fell into place that we could win 90 games. And I think uh, 91 victories uh, tells the whole story. The only time this franchise won more than 90 games was in 1979. That was 95. The next was 90. And now this club is 91. What about next year? Well, I think uh, before we look at uh, next year, I think uh, we've got to look at what, what's happened this year from spring training. We had no pitching. Now our pitching is uh, starter-wise. We've got uh, seven or eight starters that other people are starting to look at. Uh, we've got uh, people who have come into their own, people who uh, played better than they thought they could play, people who have put back-to-back -back years together like Mitch Webster, uh, people who have had career years like Gal Galarraga and especially Wallach, Heaton. We're in a situation completely different than last year. Last year at this time, uh, nobody wanted our people. No one was even interested in any of our players except Jeff Reardon. This year, there's a lot of talk all over the league, and if we want to make a trade, I think the people are there, not only in our major league uh, arena, but also in our minor league situation where our minor league people are starting to come of age and in double-A and triple-A and have tremendous value. So we've got the making of uh, putting some deals together in the winter if we think they're going to help our club. And another strength, of course, has been the bullpen by committee. Well, they've been outstanding. Uh, Burke and McGaffigan and McClure and... Uh, whoever, Sinclair, uh, uh, Hesketh, the whole group down there have been just outstanding this year. We had some reservations uh, when we traded Reardon, but we thought that the bullpen was our strength. We didn't realize just how strong those bunch of guys down there were and how good a job they, they could do. I think it's, uh, it's the best bullpen in baseball collectively, and uh, they did a tremendous job. Uh, I can't imagine where we would be without that group of guys down there. And off 
offensively, this club has been in one of the top three positions in the National League team batting average all year. And is that a bit of a surprise for you? Well, I think this is something that uh, we started, uh, started with two years ago, is trying to de-emphasize the home run and try to emphasize it using the whole ballpark. And I think although we are way, way down in home runs in the league, we're up in runs scored, we are uh, leading the league in doubles, we have all year. And I think those are the categories that we've got to concentrate on. Home runs are very nice looking in the newspaper, but runs scored is what's going to win for you. And that's what we've tried to emphasize on this ball club. And Buck, there's a big thing going around now about manager of the year. And I know that a lot of people have asked you about manager of the year. And in my opinion, and in the opinion of those who have traveled to this club all year, that there is no question who should be the manager of the year. And I'm sitting right here talking to him. Your thoughts about that? Well, it's always nice, uh, Jim, to be considered in a, in, in a group with uh, such good managers as we have in this National League. And for me to be even thought of as manager of the year, or in that area with the Lasordas and the Tanners and the, the people who have been here for a lot of years, it's very flattering. If that happens, then uh, I would be very appreciative. If it doesn't happen, uh, we know we've had a tremendous year here in Montreal, and uh, I'm very happy with it. And, uh, you know, I, I can't express my uh, thanks enough to the players, the responded, uh, the press, uh, everybody. This has just been one wonderful year for me. Well, now let's just leave baseball just for a, a last question or so. What are your immediate plans? Well, I'm going down to Florida and uh, redo a condo that I bought, and uh, then I'm going to bring my family, uh, my wife down, and uh, get her approval of everything. And I'm going back to California and uh, spend a month or so and just take it easy and uh, maybe do a little hunting and play some golf. Uh, some friends and family that I haven't seen for quite a while and just kind of get reacquainted with everybody. Are you saying playoffs and World Series or will you be uh, attending? Well, I will not be attending. I'm going to be watching and uh, with, the, uh, with the enthusiasm as we have in this league that I think that uh, the National League will prevail in, this, uh, in the playoff system. But I'll be in front of the tube and watching just like everybody else. But congratulations once more on a great job. Thank you very much, Jim. Buck Rogers, my guest. I'll be back in just a moment. Candidate for manager of the year, and that doesn't count exposed people. He has orchestrated every game like a Claude Dutois performance. Bullpen by committee, pinch hitters, lineup changes, defensive moves, you name it, Buck did it. If you were a professional second guesser, you'd be on unemployment today concerning Buck Rogers. Congratulations to Buck, to Buck's coaches, to Buck's trainers, and of course, to Buck's boys. Dave will have the lineups in just a moment. the baseball season is heating up toward the fall classic, be sure to have some cool, refreshing Orange Maison drink on hand. You know, fans, one of the great things about baseball is that no two games... Back here at Olympic Stadium to check out the starting lineups for today's game, number 162 on the playing schedule. First of all, for the Chicago Cubs, managed by Frank Lucchese. Today, Martinez, Dawson, and Sandberg at the top of their order. Dave Martinez will play in center field and bat in the leadoff spot. Andre Dawson will again hit in the number two position today, hopeful of giving Hawk just one more at-bat. He had five trips to the plate yesterday. In his first at-bat, he hit his 49th home run of the season. So Hawk will be looking for number 50 here today, batting number two and playing in right. Then the number three hitter, second baseman Ryan Sandberg. The middle third of the Cub order, Palmero, Mumphrey, and Moreland. Rafael Palmero will be playing at first base again, hitting in the cleanup spot. Jerry Mumphrey will play in left field and bat number five. And Keith Moreland, the third baseman, will bat sixth for the Cubs. Then Barry Hill, Brumley, and Moyer. Damon Berryhill will do the catching this afternoon. He'll bat seventh. Mike Brumley will be at shortstop, hitting in the eighth position. And Jamie Moyer, a left-hander pitching and batting ninth for Chicago. Checking out Buck Rogers' lineup for this game. Reigns, Webster, and Brooks at the top of the batting order. Timmy will be in left field leading off. Mitch Webster in right, batting number two. And Hubie Brooks, the shortstop, batting third for the Expos. Then Wallach, Galarraga, and Nichols. Tim Wallach, who hit a game-winning home run yesterday afternoon. He'll bat in the cleanup spot. 
and play at third base. Andres Galarraga returns to the Expos starting lineup. He'll be at first base batting number five and Reed Nichols will play in center field and bat in the sixth position. Then Law, Fitzgerald and Perez. Vance Law will be at second base to bat seventh. Mike Fitzgerald will catch the ball game and hit in the eighth spot and Pasquale Perez on the mound for the Expos in the season finale. So the Expos and the Chicago Cubs to close it out for 1987. Coming up next on our pregame show, Jim's matchup and a look back over the course of the season. We'll be back with that in just a moment. winter tires are in stock now. DeCary Hyundai offers you North America's largest service and parts department. Stop by and see their quality automobiles and service center. DeCary Hyundai, 8500 DeCary Boulevard. for this afternoon's final 1987 game between the Expos and the Cubs is a matchup review. Jim's matchups, 160 of them, covered a lot of subjects about every kind of matchup possible, from franchise matchups, player matchups, and so on, to the likes of Olympic Stadium and the Roof, Mike Schmidt and Expos pitchers, Rocky McGaffigan and Punchless Dunstan, Reigns and the National League, Candell and Hubbard, Stadium Roof and the Weatherman, Canadian Connection and the Southern League, Dodgers and the Montreal Royals, pitcher and catcher, Tim Wally and National League Player of the Week, Expos and their farm system, Expos and Padres expansion draft, Major League Brothers and Brother Combinations, Major League and the Home Run, Expos and the Free Agent Draft, Reigns and Gwynn, the Major Leagues and the name Davis, Hernandez and Galarraga, Arbitrators and Baseball Decisions, Baseball and Baseball Fights, Rogers and Herzog, Reigns and Coleman, Wallach and Clark, All-Star Game and the Expos, Expos Yesterday and Expos Today, Wallace Johnson and Pinch Hitters, Eli and the Cat, Major League Players and Sons of Major League Players, Roger Savard and the Roger Savard Blood Drive, Jeff Reed and the Three Error Inning, Expos in the Pennant Race, Cheating Pitchers in the Major Leagues, Commissioner Ubrod and the Bat Controversy, Hesketh and the Road Back, Reigns, Brock, and Stolen Bases, Olympic Stadium and Team Saves, Pasquale Perez and the National League, Bullpen by Committee and the National League, Billy Hatcher and his Cork Bat, the Expos and Montreal Fans, the Expos and Things to be Thankful for, Contenders and the Pennant Races, Big League Players and Nicknames, Expos and the East Pennant, Expos and the Calendar, Expos and one and lost records, the Expos and their Latin connection, the Expos and other 90 win teams. Jim's matchups hopefully matched up favorably with you, and you, the listening fan, are the most important matchup of all. I'll be back in just a moment. If you buy your new car, Casey and uh, Buck Rogers just met with the umpires at home plate. And just in a few minutes, this game will begin. And the first player to be on the field will be Pasquale Perez, as he has been chauffeured into the dugout by the bullpen vehicle. And he'll beat everybody to their position. And he is, there he goes. And here comes the team. And of course, by the time Pasquale gets to the mountain, which is right now, most of the players are just crossing the line. in the National League for September. Just has done everything possible for a fellow who has come to this club in late season. And he has been one great inspiration to this team and, and for this team and for the fans who are now half standing, I suppose, and giving uh, Pascal Perez and perhaps the team a standing ovation here. Now there's more standing in the I'm sure that that's a great appreciation to the team, from the fans, and 
I know that this team wants very desperately to win this game and win its 92nd game, which would be the second highest win total in the history of the franchise. And you just know that Pascual Perez wants to be the winning pitcher. He wants to finish this season undefeated in the National League. And he can do it. He has that kind of stuff. He's fun to watch, and he is a delight to see pitch because of his effectiveness and because of the the flair that he gives his pitching and uh, the uh, spontaneity of the things he does on the mound. But he's ready to go, and here's Dave with the play-by-play. -play. Thanks, Jim, and hi again, everybody. Glad to have you aboard for this afternoon's game. Pasquale has completed his warm-ups. He'll be pitching to Dave Martinez, the leadoff batter for the Chicago Cubs. And the scoreboard reminding everyone that Pasquale had been named the National League Pitcher of the Month. While Pasquale Perez and left-hander Jamie Moyer face each other here this afternoon, the New York Mets are in St. Louis, where left-handers will be pitching. Sid Fernandez, 12-8 for the Mets, Joe McGrain, or possibly Greg Matthews. So we'll have to see who...